This is the art of magic through my eyes and the eyes of some of my friends. This project started off as an experiment. The idea was to interview a few friends of mine, David Regal, Aaron Fisher, and Dan and Dave, some of the most creative and talented magicians in the world. I was interested in what some of the similarities and differences might be between the ways that we approach the art of magic. It's easier for me to say how I got started in magic than why I got started in magic. I'm David Regal, I'm a uh, writer, but my obsession is magic. I had a friend, Jerry Sibley. His dad would go to New York to Lou Tannins, and I guess they had money because he'd come back and give Jerry Sibley, this 12-year-old kid, things no 12-year-old kid should have, like, Capenetro, here, 12-year-old kid. He starts showing me this crap, and it's, it's amazing. The first magic trick I learned was a card trick featuring the glide, and I learned it uh, in summer camp when I was 14 years old. My name's Aaron Fisher, I'm a professional magician, and I've been performing magic since I was 15 years old. I paid all of the Reese's Pieces that I had in my trunk, which I was ferreting away, you know, like a badger. Uh, and I had to pay them all to an older, mean camper, the kind of camper that used to come up and punch me really hard in the shoulder. You know, that guy. <laughs> and I did that glide for every person I met for two and a half years before I discovered my first magic book. I would do it for a person over and over again until they began to understand how it worked. Because it always worked the first time. So I did. We did the Balducci levitation at school and freaked out <laughs> everyone. And of course, like a week later, they all found out how it was done because we did it so much. Hi, this is Dave. Or I'm Dave. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave. This is Dan. We're professional magicians based in LA. We've been doing magic for the past 13 years. And I would say for the past four to five years, we've been doing it professionally. When we were little, there was this uh, like local magician in town. You know, it was like the he would always do the fairs. Everyone has one. He goes to the fairs. And I remember one time he took my dad's cigarette and put it through our older brother's shirt. And I was like, okay, that is not possible. And you know, we were hooked. We wanted him to do our birthday party. You know, the next year, which he never showed up. Very sad day. <laughs> Lou Tannen's catalog. I, 12 years old, didn't know there was such a thing as a magic catalog. It was a, a bound book. It looked like the Bible. Uh, not that we had a Bible in the house, uh, but it looked like one. I saw them in movies. And I borrowed a catalog from Jerry Sibley, and it became my reading material for this huge span of my young life, every night. It's like, my, too young for pornography, every night with a flashlight, looking at Lou Tannen's descriptions of tricks, which were slightly pornographic. But this is what I love about some, some tricks. Cigarette catcher. Uh, it would have a description beyond belief. The magician shows an empty hand, reaches into the air, and produces, from nowhere, a cigarette. He takes the cigarette, tosses it into his hat, or other convenient receptacle. He reaches up, catches another cigarette. But wait, there's more. He catches as many cigarettes as he desires. I think, as many as he desires? Do you have to like fill up a room under the floor? This is the most amazing thing. Is it some vacuum tube device that goes up your leg? As many as you want, <laughs> but wait. After catching as many cigarettes as you want, the magician makes a pass over the hat or receptacle and all the cigarettes vanish. I'm thinking, what kind of cigarettes are these that dissolve when exposed to air? It seems like the power of the Olympians is now with you. And then you look down to the price, 15 cents. Oh my God! It's like you've opened some magic box to another dimension. How? They're losing money. But of course, you send away for it and you get you know, the, little, the little wire thing on on your finger. But it is a great trick, and it really did do the thing, things it said to do, and I'm sure it was appropriate having this short little 12-year-old boy catching cigarettes, but I did it for hours and hours. I saw my very first magic trick when I was four years old. My dad takes a one dollar bill, he folds it up into this little packet, and snaps, and magically changes it into a 20. Now, I was four, so I was pretty sure that I was rich at this point. I was trying to, you know, figure out what I was going to do with all my newfound money. I was going to buy a you know, a little motorcycle, a little, a little, never mind. Anyway, he takes it, folds it back up, and 
turns it back into a one, which I have to say was a lot more disappointing than the first half of the trick. But from that point on, it became a family tradition for us to watch the big David Copperfield television specials that would be on every year. And I can remember, after each special, I would take, you know, cardboard boxes, duct tape, fishing line, and I would try to recreate the, the big tricks that I saw him do. But I was hooked from that point on, you know. I kept doing magic, and, I, and, I, and there was a point where it kind of switched for me. You know, it became less exciting to see the magic and much more exciting for me to think about performing and creating those experiences for someone else.